Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. By Tri-County Logging, experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We have got a lot of variety on this week's show. We are gonna kick things off by doing a little trolling for pike and it's kind of a unique setup. Definitely gonna to wanna to see that story. We're also gonna take you to a very cool event that just happened here in West Michigan and it was all geared about getting kids into the out of doors, specifically turkey hunting. And then we're also gonna to head to the northwest part of the lower peninsula on this week's show. Something very popular this time of year is smallmouth bass fishing. We're gonna do that as well. So much good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy the wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO, the number two, Alta. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. by AnglerQuest Pontoons. AnglerQuest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. I was in northern Michigan to do something a little bit different, trolling for pike with bamboo poles. This particular family has been fishing this way for over 50 years, and I was excited to learn more about it. Well, we've been coming up here for about 60 years now, and uh, five generations of fishing this way. And we, uh, we just get out here, sit down, relax, and talk. And just a laid back style of fishing. Once you get set, you just Wait two heads. So we've been doing this a long time, and uh, we've always outfished everybody at least be ten or twenty fish to one. So we just we just like to relax. Well, the water temperature's not quite warm enough yet, but once it gets up above fifty degrees, the pike really turn on. So we'll just see wait and see what happens today. No. We finally got a fish. <laughs> like I say they're not monsters, but they're nice. Cold water, good healthy fish. 
Our great Uncle John bought a place up on Sage Lake, and he was quite the yeah, fisherman. And we would just pick these bamboo poles up for a couple bucks at the furniture store out of the carpet, you know, the rolls of carpet, and called it the lazy man's way to fish. We would just go around and uh, sit here, talk, and shoot the breeze, have a cookie and crackers, and it's kind of a, a lazy man's way of fishing. And so my grandson Anthony here, he's the fifth generation of fishing this way. And uh, back in the late 80s, everybody in the boat would catch a hundred apiece. You know, before noon, maybe by three o'clock. So it's a great way to fish. Kind of a laid back, you know, relaxing day. You just ride around the lake and watch the weather and watch the loons and the eagles and different things. And, just a enjoyable way to fish. Well, we got going along there, kind of out of control a little bit with the wind, but we uh, got one on his pole, and Grandpa got one, so we had a little double header action there, didn't we, buddy? Chickens! Chickens. <laughs> so, but yeah, we're just trolling along here. Maybe we picked up the speed a little bit, and I think that's maybe why they turned on, so we'll try to troll a little bit faster. Carl's brother, John, was also fishing with us today, just in another boat. So after a couple of hours, I decided to switch up and jump on their boat to see how things were going. Well, like I say, our dad brought us up here when we were five. My great uncle and his brother were putting cabins side by side over on Sage. And we, uh, every year we come up here and take the poles out from underneath the house, throw a daredevil on and started out a 14 foot homemade plywood boat with a five horse Johnson graduated to a 14 aluminum with a six horse Johnson. Then I've slowly graduated up to 17. Now I got 19 feet. I'm, I'm boat right now, I think, for boat size. But all you do is throw the daredevil out there, drag it around, and catch him. I mean, that's it's, there's not much easier fishing than this. You can fish, sightsee, and do everything all at the same time. We've been, I've been doing this for 62 years every spring into May. And it's it's a ball. I just love the fight. Never handle. The fishing slowed down a little bit late in the morning, but shortly after lunch, things started to pick back up. I jumped back on Carl's boat, and before long, we had a nice pike on the bamboo pole. We're gonna... Oh, you missed that! Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you lost him. Oh, oh. Did you get some footage at least? Yeah, a couple <laughs> seconds. <Woo. laughs> that one hit pretty hard. Yeah, he's a good sized fish. We're slowly getting, getting fish. The sun's coming out. Just gotta keep changing lures. It's all just hope out. Got that one on a old white and orange polka dot, three ounce Cleo. I've been fishing with bamboo for maybe 20 years, not as much as the other ones, but same thing, the 20s, these are new poles, they're like a 16 foot, so we got a 16 foot line, you know, one foot steel leader. Pretty simple setup, simple fishing. kind of how you have to do it with these big rods. You get a fish, someone needs help, you just toss it right over. It floats. Grab the steering wheels, drive the boat. <laughs> so now we gotta go get a rod. Yep. 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 It's floating. It floats. I can almost see it. I can see it way over there. Yep. We float a little bit. Nice thing about them, they float. You get too much chaos, throw it overboard. Yep. I'm going to be really cold. <laughs> tired up. Got a little head shake going. I'm glad you have to get the pole back again. Chuck my pole again. <laughs> Chuck your pole again. Yep. Yeah. Oh. All right, buddy. This one should be a little bit easier to get out. <laughs> All right, buddy. What's that guy, huh? Oh. Yeah, we were just making one more loop. It's getting later today. The shadows are starting to get out of the water. And they're getting a little more aggressive, like it's time to eat it. Yes. Go. <laughs> I got a minnow. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Same one. Yeah, I've been pulling in the boat. Yeah, come on, you can do her. Okay. Pull it in. Oh, uh, well, they say it's been a pretty slow day, but right now here in the afternoon it's kind of picked up and uh, 
what have we got, about seven or eight in the last half hour? Right, yeah. This is typically the, the ratio that we catch fish is, you know, 15 to 20, you know, every half hour to an hour. So, been pretty slow today, but, you know, clouds are coming over and I think that's making a difference. The fish are uh, getting a little more aggressive. They've been hitting pretty hard here this last 20 minutes. So, but it's been a nice day, good company, and uh, we've enjoyed it a lot. So, we'll uh, keep up our tradition of keeping the, the bamboo pole fishing alive for another generation or two, as long as we keep getting poles. <laughs> there is a lot of different ways you can catch fish around the state, some of which require thousands of dollars in equipment, and others that require very little. Special thanks to the Rogers family for letting me tag along and for showing us all a unique way to catch pike here in northern Michigan. Well, we are pretty fortunate here in the great state of Michigan to have so many good sportsman's clubs all across the state. What we're going to do right now is join one of those groups here in West Michigan that was all about getting new people into the turkey woods. A few weeks back, right about the end of April, a great event was taking place on an early morning at the Muskegon Wastewater Facility. This annual event is all about getting kids into turkey hunting. As the kids made their way to the blind, we learned more about what this hunt is really all about. Hi, I'm Aubrey Gale. I'm from uh, West Michigan Wildlife Association. And we've been putting on a turkey hunt for the youth here at the wastewater for approximately 12 years now. And the wastewater in the county have been really good with us and working with the DNR with Nick Kalis and uh, our local law enforcement people. And uh, we usually have a workshop prior to this to introduce the kids to what turkeys are all about, how they got started here in Muskegon County. And we do a lot of other programs, but uh, this is my heart right here, turkey hunting. And uh, today we're out here, we've got uh, 11 kids. And so far every kid has had a chance to shoot at one except one so far, and we still got tomorrow to go. There were several cameras out in the blinds today, and as folks were learning, it's not easy to tape a good turkey hunt. Of course, the blind was right in the way as these three long beards stopped and gave Lily a perfect shot. Lily got the job done, and what a fun hunt for her. Yeah, we came out at what, about 5.45, and we were... It was very crammed in the blind, very crammed, very crammed, but we, we managed. I had to rotate my entire body, like the entire gun, but I know it was facing right at me and I just I shot at it and it jumped, it did, it did jump, so I didn't think I got it, but then it just, it fell. It was fun, my heart was like racing, like racing, racing, <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. Aubrey has been doing this hunt for a long time and seeing many of these kids find a love of the out of doors. It's a great organization that we're here to help kids. Uh, different programs, it could be Ravana Conservation Club, it could be this organization over here or this one over here. If they're doing something with kids, we want to help support that. We'll help them financially or whatever else we can do. Uh, we help with a youth, uh, youth day every September. We're always part of that program. And we want kids to, we try to take 10, 11, 12 kids every year here on the wastewater. We love getting kids, especially those who don't have a father to take them out. Um, or any kid that really is interested in getting into hunting. We want to help them. And uh, we have guides and we set everything up for them. All they have to do is show up and go through our program. This is a great program, and this nice bird was taken by Brett Spoolman, and he was more than happy to show him off. He has pretty much like a 10 inch beard, beard or so, maybe 10 and a half, 9. Beautiful bird, buddy. Yeah. What do you think about turkey hunting? How many birds have you shot in your life? Uh, well, now I shot uh, four birds, one Jake and uh, three toms now. Do you care to do it again? Are you hooked? Is it so-so? What, what would you rate turkey hunting? Once you get uh, started, you, do, you just are hooked. You want to do it every year. 
Well, getting kids hooked is what this is really all about. With all the competing things for our kids' attention, it's days like this that really can make a difference. Uh, we like to keep the kids from 10 to 16 um, in that range. Uh, we don't want them too young because, you know, shotguns are a little tougher on people, so we try to keep it in that range. Uh, we do it for two years. They get a chance to come in for two times and then we want more other kids to come in. So usually we split it up. There's usually four or five new ones and maybe four or five that are second year program. Uh, what's great, we got three kids that are now guides that went through our program younger and now are out there helping uh, other kids. And uh, that's what we wanna see, the younger people getting involved in the outdoors. Well, with a lot of first-time hunters, there is bound to be a few misses, but Jaden Johnson did get another crack and took a nice tom as well. There seem to be plenty of birds today so far. One of the things I was involved with many years ago is the planting of birds here in Muskegon County uh, with the DNR. I was involved in much of that. And to see how they progressed, we started out in Ravana, we were up by Bridgeton, we did up in Holt, and we did a whole number of places. And... <laughs> The birds have just went crazy. I mean, there's birds all over Muskegon County, and whether you're in the city or out here on the wastewater, which and we didn't hunt here last year because of the pandemic, and the birds have just blossomed here. You just you can see toms all over, so it's been a great experience for these kids. If they don't even get a shot, they're going to see birds. So then we can move them around to different places. Uh, Muskegon County itself, we've just seen the birds just expand all over the county and we've gave opportunity for all hunters uh, all over this county and the state because uh, we didn't have birds back in the early 80s and stuff like that. So very few birds. So the plants have worked really well and it produced uh, all over the place. So it's awesome. It is so important to have days like this for many reasons. It has fallen off, it really has. It's gotten tougher every year to see kids out there, but uh, I still have hope. And when I see young people coming up through our program and then continuing uh, hunting and helping other kids, that gives me hope that there's a future here. Our hope is that future generations do pick up this love of the outdoors and all our great state has to offer. Thanks to all that made today happen and for all the folks that took a camera along as well. Thanks for letting us tag along here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, when it comes to smallmouth bass fishing, we in Michigan are pretty spoiled. Lake St. Clair is known as the smallmouth capital of the world, and rightfully so, but many people would prefer and even think it might even be better in the northwest part of the Lower Peninsula. Well, the game plan is we're going to go out here on this lovely northern Michigan lake and try and find some smallmouth. Yeah? Yeah, see if we can't find some of the big ones that roam up here. Lots of little inland lakes up here though, right? Yeah, the, we're really fortunate up here. We have a lot of lakes. Um, there's multiple lakes within, you know, 30, 40 miles of Traverse City that, that we fish. Um, I literally, I try to fish about 15 to 20 this time of year. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of them and there's a lot of good smallmouth fishing. So nice. let's see what happens. Joining Chris today was his good buddy, Andrew Lemley. We were on the Torch Lake chain of lakes just outside of Traverse City today looking for big smallies. It was cold and raining, but we sat down right on some fish and it was one after another as we got started. <laughs> That's a little better one, not big, but a little better. They're here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Is that a large one? No, it's a smallie. Coming in a little, yeah, he got it underneath the chin. Right. Fish. Oh yeah. All right, coming in. Oh yeah, it's a little better. Took a swat at it. You got all sorts of the business end of it. This is where you got to be careful with Mr. Smallmouth. Smallies are a ton of fun to catch, and Chris usually likes to throw a lot of different baits to start the day. Yeah, usually we start off, you know, and try a couple different things. That way you can really dial in on what they're doing. Some days they want to eat a jerk bait. Some days they want to eat a swim bait. Um, some days they'll eat a rattle trap better. So you really try different things to hone in on it. Right now, I believe it's 3-3. Three, three. He's got another one on right here. Looks more like a real one. Nice fish. 
a little bit better. Oh yeah. There we go. But right now, right now they're eating anything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they're really starting to get more aggressive here as the water warms up. Yeah. I mean, a week ago we had a little pre-spawner. 40. What was it? 43 degrees here. Ah. Uh, 44. Water? Or? Yeah, water temperature, <laughs> and we're up to about 52 now. So we've had almost 10 degrees difference here in the last seven days. Okay. So. What's the temperature they really are looking for to spawn? Uh, up in the 60s, the oh, okay. low 50s to uh, mid 60s right there is when they'll really start getting after it. So, Chris has been a full-time guide up here for many years, and it's always fun to learn from the guys that do this all the time. He has clients most days and is on the water starting in April. That's a nice fish there. There you go. Yeah. Get a picture of this one. Little deep dive and drink bait. Oh, nice. Oh, fatty it's a toad. Man. Good morning, sweetheart. Thank you for coming to play. Now just let's keep the hooks off Daddy's fingers. <laughs> Boy, you really ate that. Yeah, you got all, all sorts of the business. And what's really good is when you see them hitting it from the front like that, when they're getting that front hook in their mouth, you know they're really eating it good. So. One thing I think most of us are not aware of as Michiganders, especially if you're not a fisherman, is just how good our smallmouth fishing is. It's really world renowned. Well, I've been fortunate enough, same as Andrew, to fish a lot of places in the country. And I mean, they're, Northern Michigan, in my opinion, and from everywhere I've fished, is probably some of the best fishing on the face of the planet. Um, doesn't have to be a big lake, doesn't have to be a little lake. It, every lake up here has big fish in it. And when we say big fish, we mean fish five pounds or better. Okay. Um, we're very, very fortunate to have that up here. And you're talking all smallmouth? Yeah, all smallmouth. There's largemouth mixed in in some of these lakes too. Um, they're more of a, a weed-oriented fish or a, a wood-oriented fish where a smallmouth gets out and roams. They'll be out on a flat somewhere in the middle of nowhere where Mr. Largemouth likes a little bit more cover. If you're just looking to get started, the swim bait is a great way to catch fish on many of these northern Michigan lakes. It is. It's probably my favorite thing to fish. Uh, you can fish it deep, shallow. Uh, and anybody can fish it. It's just a steady retrieve. Um, good way to get somebody that's new to the sport into it. Um, nice. Stuff like that. Yeah, it's really easy and it's a proven fish catcher. What kind of weight you get on there? Uh, this is 3 8 ounce uh, for probably 10 to 15 feet. Um, you can get a little lighter as you go shallower, stuff like that, but uh, okay. very versatile bait. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a nice fish there. Come on over here. Whoa! There we go. That's a big one. Right. I don't know if I should do this one. <laughs> There's Jeez. a nice one. Uh. How big is that guy? Uh, he's in the four pound range. Okay. Good solid fish. Yeah, and you got the pretty eyes. Hooks are sharp. Got it in the front face again. Beautiful. That's a nice fish. Northern Michigan smallmouth right there. That's what it's all about. Nice job, young man. Fun day, huh? Yeah. Chris, talk to me a little bit about working this jerk bait. How, how are you working that thing? Well, the key to working a jerk bait, uh, two things is rod selection and how you work it. I prefer a shorter rod and I prefer to throw it on a spinning rod. You can throw it on a casting rod as well, but uh, this is a 783 SSJR Loomis E6X. It's a six, six foot rod, um, <clears throat> six foot six inches. Uh, and you really want to snap this. You want to make sure you get a good long cast. Um, I usually reel it down first to start with. I'll reel it down, jerking it a little bit. And you want to make sure you jerk it on slack line. Um, slack line is one of the keys to make sure you get that bait to dart left and right and cover the water column. Um, if you reel it down and jerk it down, it gets down to the depth it's supposed to be at, which right here we're in about eight to nine feet. And uh, I'm just barely touching the bottom with this jerk bait from time to time. But you're always jerking it on slack line. I like to jerk it straight down. Get a good cast out there again. And then you let <clears throat> the colder water, you let it pause a little bit longer, but the water's warmed up here. We're looking at about 53 and a half degree water. 
So I'll just let it sit there. And I watch my slack line, it's kind of like a bobber. If that line happens to jump, then I know a fish hit it. So, but one of the funnest ways to catch smallmouth for sure. Well, truth be told, we could have showed you several more fish, and we were only on the water a few short hours. We never did catch the six or seven pounders in here, but they are here. So if you're up north this summer, find a lake and have some fun. Thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or if you want to see something again, you can always check us out online. You can do that through our website. We have full episodes of the show there every week. And we're also on most of the social media sites if you want to see what we're doing on a more day-to-day -day basis. If you're ever on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there. Get an email every time we post something new. And speaking of new, there will be a lot of it coming over the next several weeks. So much good hunting and fishing happening right now in the great state of Michigan. So get out there and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit greenstonefcs.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love.